Thank you, Prof. Mazuki, for the kind introduction and uh, welcome everyone to this uh, webinar on occupational cancer in Malaysia. This uh, uh, Today we are going to discuss about uh, occupational cancer and current issues and development. I am Professor Victor Ho from the Center for Occupational and Environmental Health, University of Malaya. So before we start looking at occupational cancer, we look at we'll need to look at occupational related injury and diseases. So in uh, 2017, the international organization has uh, international labor organization has actually published a report that says that the resulting health problem from economic losses affect our first and foremost uh, countries with less developed uh, prevention culture. So the the number of occupational related um, people dying from for uh, diseases is almost the same. It's around 2.78 million. It have not changed in the last report and basically it's through work related accidents and diseases. And occupational injury actually kills uh, 380,000 people, but the, there's more people dying from work related diseases than occupational diseases. So, so it's important, it's important to, to, uh, to know that if you are in the uh, safety and health uh, perspective, you will know that most of the time you look at occupational accident and you think that, that is the, that's the main thing you see, but if, but when you focus more deeply, you know that uh, the data should would say that uh, there are more cases of occupational death due to work related diseases compared to occupational accident. And we know that 160 million new cases of occupational illness are diagnosed yearly. Of course, this has something uh, impact on the financial burden and financial basically when we're talking about occupational diseases, also we need to focus on the not just the number of diseases that's happening, but also the financial burden towards the individual and also the country. So financial burden of compensation, healthcare, rehabilitation, and rehabilitation is huge, and it's around four percent of the world's GDP. So these numbers also have not changed over the last period. So the four percent is still there, but it is, it, it's in developing countries is worse. It's up to ten percent of the GDP. While injuries number have gone down in developed country, the, the, it continued to increase in the developing country. So the, I, the thing is, we are basically in a developing country. We need to focus on that, need to identify the, the burden of occupational diseases, which we would present later that is uh, uh, lacking, especially in Malaysia. So among, among the 2.4 million cases of uh, the 666,000 six, six are due to occupational cancer and occupational exposure caused 5.3 to 8.4 percent of all cancer among men and 7. Point, and among and almost 30 percent of all lung cancer so when you look at when you look at this this uh, figures you you would you would basically wonder why why the why the number of uh, occupational related cancer uh, incidents or compensation and also uh, notification in Malaysia is basically low I will present this uh, later to discuss on the issue. So the, the thing is, why is it still low? And lung cancer actually, out of, uh, lung, out of the occupational cancer, uh, lung cancer actually contribute the most, between 54 and 75 percent of occupational cancer are due to lung, uh, due to lung cancer. So we hope that uh, uh, Dr. Dr. Wong Chi Kwan can basically discuss and, and identify, uh, share with us the current issue of lung cancer in Malaysia and how can we as a physician and occupational health doctor uh, help to basically identify occupational lung cancer. These are the numbers of uh, compensated occupational cancer uh, as uh, reported by Stockso. So all these numbers basically comes from the uh, annual report and they used to they used to report report uh, the different category of cancer uh, that they get but because of the uh, data which is not really uh, accurate, so they have basically uh, stopped reporting those numbers since 2017 and to 10 since 2017. So we only have the num total number of cases, all right. So the total number of cases is basically very low, between between uh, 19 and uh, six per year, and it is basically contributing to less than between uh, 3.35 and 0.12. Point, less than 0.1 uh, per 100,000 uh, cancer, per 100,000 active uh, contributors. So the number of cancer cases per contributors and the total number of uh, cancer cases 
that has been compensated in Malaysia is very, very low. Although, although if you look at it, the people who actually are uh, insured by uh, SOXO uh, before before 2016 are from the uh, higher risk category. Basically, they are all blue collar worker instead of white collar worker. So the number of cancer cases should be higher. The the question is why is the compensated number of can cancer cases is very low among our, our SOXO contributors? Those those issues we, we need to discuss uh, later in the forum. But currently, we basically we're just presenting the numbers and then discussing what what may be may what may be the issue of the low numbers. So the number of cases uh, basically varies between 19 and uh, five, five and 19 over uh, yearly. And compared to the number of occupational diseases, which is on the rise from 900 to uh, 4,000, and the percentage is actually uh, of uh, cancer, of cases of cancer among occupational diseases is less than, less, is only 0.17%. So it's less than 1% of the total number of uh, reported occupational diseases that we see are uh, due to cancer. So we need we need to focus on what what is the issue with that and how can we how can we uh, improve on that. That's why we are having this discussion today and also the research itself is basically on identifying problems that is faced by the practitioner on on identifying or on recognizing what is occupational cancer and what and how do we report occupational cancer. So since since the data in Malaysia is very very uh, no, there's not much data on occupational cancer in Malaysia. Also, there's not much research on occupational cancer uh, in Malaysia, especially on the uh, prevalence of cancer or different type of cancer. So we focus, we would basically discuss on cancer that's happening uh, elsewhere in other countries. So the first, the first discussion we thought, thought we going to focus on is the occupational cancer in UK. All right. So the UK com occupational cancer compensated in UK, this is basically the same as what is done for SOXO in Malaysia. So yearly, they have around 2,374 uh, new occupational cancer cases per year. And for us, it's, it's only 19 cases. And the population of UK and the population of Malaysia is almost the same. And of course, and now Malaysia have more higher population compared to the UK. So it's equal to amount for one quarter of the total compensated cases. So you look at look at the data in Malaysia. Our our percentage of compensated uh, cases of uh, occupational injuries is only occupational diseases is only 0.17 percent. So it's very very small compared uh, to the uh, to the one the, the, the numbers that is basically uh, reported in the UK by the Health and Safety Executive. So majority of the cancer uh, majority of the cancer is basically related to asbestos, and of course there's mesothelioma which is 2,995 cases, asbestos related cancer, and non asbestos related cancer only 18 uh, per year. So if you look at this figure, you ask a question whether whether it's because of the asbestos uh, use. So the occupational cancer compensated is basically, look at it that maybe most probably because our use of asbestos is low and or is it our reporting of asbestos related diseases is low. So with this one, we need to discuss. So later, when, when Dr. Wong present the cancer in Malaysia, we will be able to discuss in our forum whether this is the way and how, how can we improve on reporting of asbestos related diseases in Malaysia. So if you look at if you look at non asbestos related diseases, if the number is actually 18 per year. It's almost similar to what Malaysia have of uh, cancer in Malaysia, compensation of cancer in Malaysia is around 19 to 8. So the number almost is the same, similar to UK. UK, if we remove asbestos, so the, the the issue now is is it is it current the true figure or is it different from other from different from uh, what we have we, what we are looking at now? Of course, the total cost uh, of cancer to the society, this occupational cancer, is also very high. So lung cancer estimated to cost 6.8 billion, mesothelioma 3 3 billion and uh, breast cancer uh, 1.1 billion. So, so lung cancer of, and Mr. Tulma are basically related to asbestos and breast cancer is, is, is related to uh, secondhand smoke. So basically they consider secondhand smoke in the workplace as a cause of uh, occupational cancer. So are we, are we considering that or not? And how, if we are considering that, is that can, can, we, can we consider that as 
occupation of cancer. So the, the other discussion is on UK total annual cost of society, uh, new cases of work with the cancer. This is basically look at the cost. This is to break down the cost. What is actually what cost? What is the most important cost? It's not just it's not just health and uh, rehabilitation related cost, but the cost is calculated based on the human cost, it means to the year of life loss and also the productivity cost because of the, of the person not a, being able to work. So the cost is in, in millions. So it's basically around uh, 11, 11 billion of human cost and 500 million of uh, productivity loss cost. So the, I, the the thing is, it's not just it's not just giving treatment, it's not just the management of the case, but it's a loss to society based because of the uh, year life loss uh, due to the disability caused by cancer, both for uh, fatal and non fatal cancer cases. So the total cost is around 12, 12 billion per year uh, for the total cost of cancer, work related cancer. So that is that is quite a high number. That's why that's why the number comes up to around four percent of the GDP. Was uh, domestic product. I think everyone would know this uh, classification. So basically, the International uh, Agency for Research on Cancer every year would have some meetings to discuss on the how to group the cancer into three uh, into four groups basically. But in 2000, in 2000, they have, they have not reported the group four, which is uh, non-cancerous. And usually the group for non-cancerous has only one agent. So cut, if you look at yearly yearly changes, the number of uh, the agents classified into group one will increase over the years. And currently there's 121 uh, known carcinogen, and 2A is probable carcinogen to human. There's 2,088, uh, uh, and uh, the possible carcinogen is 303. Why are we discussing this here today is just to just because the next slide we will talk about uh, a study that's been done to uh, estimate the the cost and also the uh, the number of uh, prevalence of global cases of uh, occupational cancer based on the based on the 18 uh, uh, hazard that is classified under group one from the IARC. So the uh, in the following few slides, I will discuss on the global and regional burdens of cancer in 2016, arising for occupation exposure selected carcinogen. This is basically a systematic review of the global burden of disease study 2016. So this is the latest study on, on global burden of disease. So this will give us an idea of what are the burden of diseases that is happening and what's the what's the cancer cause of the burden of diseases, especially those focusing on occupation of cancer. So method, basically what happened is that they take a 1.14 uh, IRC group 1 occupational carcinogen. Uh, estimation was done using population attributable fraction, uh, which is basically to, to look at how much of the how much of the uh, diseases is caused by cancer and based on past population exposure prevalence relative risk from literature. And also in exposure information is basically uh, primary from the CAREX or carcinogen exposure database. So about exposure information, uh, uh, Dr. Jasima will basically be able to discuss with you about how to how to look at uh, carcinogen exposure databases, which she is trying to develop one for uh, Malaysia, so that we can understand what are the risk, what are the carcinogen available in Malaysia, and how how much of it is it, and what are the what are the estimate that we can get from number of cancer cases, although we don't have a number of cancer cases uh, compensated or notified. So the, re the research actually look at pri eight primary cancer sites, which is breast cancer, and breast cancer is basically caused by secondhand smoke, kidney cancer, trichloroethylene, trachea bronchus, and lung is, is uh, grouped as lung cancer. So the agent is arsenic, asbestos, beryllium, cadmium, chromium for this engine as well, secondhand smoke, uh, nickel, uh, PDH, polyaromatic hydrocarbon, and silica. Larynx is asbestos and strong in inorganic acid mist. Leukemia is benzene and formaldehyde, acetylamide, asbestos, nasopharynx is formaldehyde, and ovary is also asbestos. So these are the things, these are the 
eight cancer site that's considered in this in this study and from the 18 uh, IRC type IRC one uh, carcinogens. So from the estimate, basically they estimated that around 349 uh, million cancer cases of death occur and out of those 79% are from male and lung cancer is, is the highest of which the highest percentage and Mr. followed by Mr. Tumor and Eric's. This is, this is important for us to know that because it's lung cancer and of course if you look at lung cancer it can cause by it can cause not just not just from asbestos but also from arsenic, beryllium, cadmium, chromium, visa engine exhaust, secondhand smoke, nickel, uh, polyaromatic hydrocarbon and silica. Of course most of the lung cancer uh, uh, that was compensated in the UK is by asbestos but no other chemical also can cause uh, lung cancer. So so the, the, the question is are we able to, uh, how, why are we missing this uh, cancer or lung cancer cases, lung cancer as an occupational cancer, although we do use uh, these chemicals in Malaysia. And also we do have uh, exposure by our uh, uh, workers to uh, diesel engine exhaust smoke. So risk factor res responsible for the cancer, as I mentioned earlier, the most of it is basically due to uh, asbestos, and asbestos basically causes the largest amount of occupational related uh, death due to cancer, and uh, followed by secondhand smoke and silica and diesel engine exhaust. And of course, we know that in Malaysia also we have silica, but the the number of cases of silicosis that we've seen yearly is very very small. And how can we uh, not just the Pneumoconiosis that we see that is that is considered to be silicosis is very small, and the, the diagnosed by our respiratory physician also is very very low. The other the other major major agent is based your diesel exhaust, diesel engine exhaust, which we did not consider and and we did not look at it and in in a in a more holistic more holistic manner. Common cancer site, as we know, is basically lung followed by and then larynx. So lung and larynx is the two most common cancer site uh, when there's a little occupational cancer. And most of it, as I mentioned, is due to the asbestos, followed by silica, secondhand smoke, this and this exhaust. And larynx cancer is due to asbestos and also in strong in acidness. So the main how much of those years, basically when we talk about uh, cost, we look at the human cost, correct? So the human cost is calculated by using the disability adjusted life years. It means year, years life lost due to disability, either due to premature death or due to, uh, because of because of not able able to function fully. So this is called uh, so-called disability. So 7.2 uh, million uh, it, uh, Dali is lost due to cancer and 3.4% and it basically represents 3.4% of all Dali lost uh, amount of the population. So as uh, the same actually because of lung cancer is the highest uh, prevalence uh, in amount, amount of occupational cancer. So it basically contributes to the highest uh, Dali based from that from that perspective. So lung cancer is 8.4% the situation there is cancer is 2.3 percent. So how do we, how this is the example of how uh, people calculate uh, disability adjusted life years or life years lost due to cancer. The information below is basically uh, uh, taken using female breast cancer as an example. So if there is, the first one is incidence. On the top is basically looking at focus on uh, non-fatal carcinoma and on the bottom one is to focus on fatal carcinoma. So we look at non-fatal carcinoma, when you diagnose a case, basically diagnosis and treatment will take two months. State of after curative uh, primary treatment, the remaining uh, five years is basically around 4.8 years and survival with long-term circulate is 22 years. So these are the, these are the uh, years life loss basically subtracted from the uh, disability adjusted life years. But of course, we know that uh, if you die from cancer, the the, uh, the the year's life loss is basically uh, less because of the 
you die earlier, but the year life loss is basically is still is still high. So diagnosis of primary tre treatment in three months, in remission in three months, determine uh, pre cancer one point five years and terminal stage one month. So we could there. So this is how the uh, DALI is uh, calculated. This is just to to give you an idea of when we talk about DALI and year life loss. What, what we took, what we put in, basically we put in the diagnostic and therapy time, we put in the curative or remission time, and then we look at the uh, long-term circulate of the of the cost of the uh, year's life loss. The other way, the other way of looking at cancer, uh, occupation cancer, is what we call population attributed fraction. So population attributed fraction is basically how much of the attributed uh, uh, risk or attributed is total death is due to cancer. So earlier we have presented that 3.9% of death are due to occupational cancer. That means out of the total number of death to, uh, of occupational disease, 3.9% are due to occupational cancer. And of course, because of the higher exposure among males, which is higher in male as compared to females. So what has changed in global attributed death due to carcinogen from 1990 to 2016. So this basically presents a death per 100,000 uh, population. So we, we, we see that there is actually a trend of decreasing uh, trend of uh, uh, asbestos because of the decreasing asbestos use, because of the banning of asbestos in many countries, in around 55 countries. And of course, Malaysia have not banned asbestos yet. I think Indonesia, Indonesia and Brunei may, may be on a better path than Malaysia. And secondhand smoke also that's decreasing because there's a banning of uh, smoking in the workplace. Silica uh, is, is also decreasing because of the understanding of the uh, exposure silica. But of course, we understand that there are new uh, ways of being exposed to silica and that becomes a problem in many countries. Uh, some of it in, in Australia and also in Italy when they basically found that silicosis was associated with uh, with installation of a kitchen hard top where the hard top actually contains a, a lot of silica in there as, as one of their component or quartz. And the the other thing that's on the rise is basically this uh, exhaust smoke, which is basically 29%. Of course, this will come down in the future years because of the migration from uh, diesel engine to electric engine especially in uh, many countries that they are using electric buses instead instead of uh, diesel buses. The, you can see it in China uh, where there's a large amount of buses are basically uh, not diesel anymore. So the numbers will come down. So to look at this, you look at that. This is traditional hazard that are here. Abestos, uh, secondhand smoke, silica and certain source smoke. So most of it is coming down. So this is a good indication that uh, the cancer in the future would come down especially occupational cancer. The other way of looking at it also is that because of our, the, the, the decrease in number is because of us moving from blue collar to white collar, from, from us uh, basically focusing on more on uh, office work rather than rather than on uh, mining and on uh, other other uh, other kind of work. So uh, Malaysia, Malaysia is quite lucky in the sense that we, the, our mining our mining operation in Malaysia is quite small compared to compared to countries like in, in, in Australia or in, in Europe. That's, that's why that's why the uh, asbestos asbestos is, uh, crisis is basically higher in those countries. The other issue the other issue also about asbestos that, that we need to we need to consider is that because during during the early early time post uh, World War Two. There was an asbestos boom because asbestos was considered a, a magical substance that can that can be used for everything. So asbestos was mined extensively in Europe and also in uh, in Australia and also in many other countries like in Russia and in, in China. And the use of asbestos basically was very extensive during that time, and a lot of, a lot of people don't understand the risk of asbestos use during that time. So there's and we know that the uh, Black period, as mentioned by Prof. Masuki earlier, for for the occupation cancer is around 30 to 40 years. So the lag period basically would have uh, increases to this year. So so that's why asbestos is is high in these countries. But whether 
in Malaysia, the use of asbestos is that we, we do use asbestos, but not, not to that extensive extent. And also we don't have asbestos mine in Malaysia. So, so our problem might not be might not be asbestos and might be other things. So moving forward, we know that uh, a lot of a lot of these uh, heavy industries are moving to light industries and also we are moving back to office. So the other the other thing that is uh, on the on the horizon is shift work. So let us focus on whether shift work actually uh, related to cancer or not, because a lot of people think that shift work is is can cause cancer and we will look at some some literature and then at the end we will basically come to a conclusion or come to a, we can discuss further on whether shift work related to cancer. So this one we're talking about, we're going to focus on shift work and cancer. So the next cup, the next couple of slides, the next part of it, is we're going to only talk about shift work and cancer. And then from that, after we'll conclude my part and I will pass on to it to uh, Jasima to, to discuss about uh, her research that was her PhD research. So shift work, of course, shift work is a method of organization working time in which workers succeed one another at the workplace so that the establishment can operate longer than the normal working hours of an individual. So why we do shift work? There's two, two reasons why we do shift work. Firstly, we do shift work because the industry demands that we do shift work because we know that a lot of machineries, when you when you when you basically uh, commission them and when you start them, is this is this more economical to run it 24 hours a day than to run it to run it on a, on a office hour basis? And also, a lot of machineries are the cost of the machineries or the lifetime of the machineries or the the effect efficacy efficacy or efficiency of the machineries also uh, come down over the years. So it's it's much more. This is much more better to run the machine 24 hours to have the best of the uh, returns of your investment on the machinery. The other reason why we do shift work, of course, is due to due to uh, 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 due to the demand the demand of the uh, community where, like currently, especially in the healthcare industry, uh, shift work is is not is not to, is a norm. And and it, everybody needs to do shift work because of the 24-hour nature of our healthcare industry. So that 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 is why shift work is considered a very important occupational hazard. And why why is it important? Basically, of course, we have a type of shift work. We can we can divide into night shift work only, permanent shift, rotating shift, continuous shift, and non-continuous shift work. So, which is the best best shift work, and which is not the best shift work? Uh, it is it is open to uh, discussion. But usually, basically, if you if you do a rotating shift, is it you do a forward shift, or if you do a constant night shift, it's better than the shift work that you you basically take uh, uh, more of a rotating shift work. So, what are the what are the prevalence of shift work that that people are in in the world? So in few countries, basically they have information on shift work. So in EU, it's 35% of healthcare worker, 34.5% of plant and machine operators and assembler. As I, as I mentioned earlier, when you talk about machine, you need to be run 24 hours a day to ensure that the return of investment and hotels and services and also manufacturing. In the US, hospitality industry, which, uh, which includes uh, 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 healthcare industry, mining, transport, wholesale and manufacturing. So these are these are the major uh, workers in this industry that basically uh, are in shift work. So, so you look at it between between twenty around thirty percent of the population in this industry basically are are engaged in shift work. So it is important for us to look at whether shift work actually cause cancer. Now. So is that is that enough research to say that shift work actually cause cancer? All right. So night shift work or shift work has been has been uh, classified by under IRC 2A, which is, prob which is, which is basically probable carcinogen, which means that there's limited uh, evidence of carcinogen in human, but sufficient uh, evidence of carcinogen in an experimental animal. That's why over the last couple, over the last couple of years or last decade, a lot of research has been done on looking at shift work and cancer, and, and basically a lot of this using using large uh, cohort study to identify whether shift work actually can cause cancer. 
So, so how does swift work cause cancer? Swift work cause cancer by looking at suppression of melatonin hormone and also alteration of immune function. We know that melatonin is one of the hormone that is secreted and uh, the secretion of the melatonin hormone is based on uh, circadian, circadian rhythm and it's also influenced by the natural or ambient lighting around us. So, so the mel melatonin is basically a ton strong and antioxidant is protect the cells from getting damages and also on static action. So people, people have the theory, theoretical thing that because of the lack of melatonin and lack of secretion that, that is increased in the chances of getting uh, cancer in the uh, in people working shift work. So example of pathway of shift work causing ill health. So shift work basically if you look at it, you can you can get nice shift like here, decrease in melatonin, decrease in carriers of reactive oxygen species and and that's where it causes heart disease, premature aging, and cancer. It also can be because of the obesity, stroke, and diabetes, which leads to uh, cancer concentration. So the uh, the thing is that the, the decrease in melatonin is the one that we focus on when we when we want to discuss on on cancer. Of course, we know shift work doesn't only cause cancer. Shift work also related to other other unhealthy conditions like uh, obesity, stroke, diabetes, because of uh, increase in uh, consumption of eating. And also destruction of the uh, hormonal, hormonal uh, distribution of circadian rhythm. So, what is mass melatonin? Melatonin is uh, is basically secreted in from the uh, pineal gland and synthesized follows the rhythmatic uh, rhythmatic driven by the clock. So, when there's light, there's inhibition. Uh, when there's a uh, when there's, there's no light, become a stimulation of the production of melatonin. So melatonin basically, and then it is depends on the biological clock or our circadian rhythm. First, we focus on the most common uh, discussion among uh, the researcher in the field of uh, shift work and cancer, which is shift work and uh, breast cancer. So, so I I would start my discussion with looking at one of the uh, systematic review and meta analysis. Uh, this is a very recent systematic analysis done in 2014, looking at 1.4 million uh, women in total, and they look at uh, big studies, basically studies that have 500,000, half a million, uh, half a billion, uh, no, 5,000, half a million uh, population, uh, million, uh, million women study and epic uh, Oxford study and UK biobank study is quarter of million studies. So the total amount of uh, population is basically quite high and they use this, use this, they look at follow up over, over the period and see whether the person actually, uh, the, the participant actually develop cancer and then look at their risk factor, earlier risk factor to see whether the risk factor are related to, to can develop a cancer in the future. And also they, they included another seven previous published study and look at the cohort. So the total number of women in this uh, analysis is 1.4 million. So breast cancer among shift work. So they found that in the million study uh, out of the uh, 500,000, 673 have breast cancer and the risk of the relative risk is one. And the relative risk for more than 20 years of night shift work is also one. Both of them are not significant. In the Oxford study, also is not uh, is also 1.07, but this is not significant. And the UK Biobank study also is not significant, although there's a reduction in the uh, breast uh, next year metrics. So the data the data actually does not does not uh, what we call uh, argue well that uh, shift work actually the uh, next shift work especially actually cause uh, cause breast cancer. So, night. So, they, if you look at if you look at all night shift work, then uh, looking at the meta analysis of the uh, study, seven study in Japan, including the three cohort study, you will found that there is no there is no uh, association found between all night shift work and uh, cancer, and even for twenty years twenty years a night shift work or thirty years night shift work, there is no. There's no association found between between uh, night shift work and, and cancer among among women, especially we focus on breast cancer. So the the 
the thing is, so, so that's so the, the other question is so, if breast cancer, if uh, Shifu doesn't cause breast cancer, does Shifu cause other kind of cancer? So for this, for the for the, we will discuss this and, and look at it from uh, from perspective. So the second thing we look at the second second study that we are going to discuss on is uh, another study on an updated systematic review and mental analysis, which is published uh, just last year on Shifu and prostate cancer. So a total of 18 studies on shift work and prostate cancer was found and six of it is called study and six is case control study. And basically shift work and prostate cancer, you look at rotating, the rotating night shift, the 17 studies, the odd ratio is just 1.07 and the effect of confidence interval is still, is still not significant. In a core study, the Old ratio is 1.03 and also not significant. And we look at only high quality study, that means studies that's been done uh, in a considered high quality, the odds ratio actually is lower. It is less than one, which basically that means there is a there is considered a protective factor, but of course we do hope all of them are not significant. So studies uh, show that there is no association between uh, shift work and prostate cancer. When you look at the start, look at the information further, or we will we will digest the information further. Look at it is that, all right. So exposure variable, we look at rotating shift work exclusively. The numbers, the numbers actually it shows that there are not much. Uh, uh, what we call, there's there's not show any association between between occupational uh, uh, cancer and, and shift work. So subgroup, even subgroup analysis, except for except for uh, in Asian country, when three when there's three studies that look at pool result is one point eight four. This slide we're going to discuss on shift work and uh, skin cancer. So three point five million. Uh, Participant uh, participated in this uh, meta analysis where they look at 17,000 uh, skin cancer cases. So they found that ever shift, that means ever have uh, exposure to shift work, you have relative risk. Of, so melatonin, melanoma, shift work actually cause melanoma, but it, it basically is protective against basal cell carcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma. So the out of the eleven studies that look at melanoma, it found that shift work actually caused melan melanoma, which is very interesting findings. All right, and further they actually find a dose response relationship uh, of the shift work and risk of melanoma, two percent increase in every year of shift work, and you can get point means the relative for one point oh two, and that, that means every year you're exposed to shift work, your your risk increase by point two percent. To get uh, melanoma, so it's quite an interesting study. In the study, they did discuss the possible outcome, but they have not. They still cannot, still don't understand what is the what is the rationale or what's the possible uh, biological possibility of shift work related to uh, skin cancer. So this is my this is my uh, final slide, which is basically looking at. Uh, Type of cancer, all right. So this is the this is the this is the latest latest uh, research on meta analysis uh, on many many uh, all type of cancer all type of cancer and associated with night shift work and niche type of cancer. So we look at if you look at the data itself, uh, there is no evidence actually to show that shift work actually cause breast cancer, prostate cancer ovarian cancer, pancreatic cancer, colorectal cancer, lung cancer, non-Hodgkin lymphoma, stomach cancer, skin cancer, neuroagent, agent, esophageal cancer, leukemia, uh, uterus cancer, over oral cancer, larynx ca and testis cancer. So evidence from studies being published have not shown uh, there's, there's a relationship. Of course, we we look at we look down at the uh, lower the studies that is 
other studies, basically they have very small studies and the numbers is very small. So the number of studies is very small. The number of participants participant also is small. So the issue of whether whether there, uh, there is is it is it is the, is the evidence uh, strong or not? We need to consider that. But currently, the evidence available shows that uh, shift work is not does not is not related to uh, cancer itself. So we need to we need to reconsider and rethink of the possibility of shift work as a as a uh, risk for cancer, for breast cancer or for prostate cancer. The information, the, the so the chiral cavernous does not show that there is a relationship between shift work and cancer. The relationship between shift work and melanoma needs further studies to identify the possible mechanism, which is basically that is the case. So this, this comes to the conclusion of my discussion. So basically the, the, the discussion basically focused on we started off with uh, looking at the number of looking at the number of occupational diseases and injuries that is uh, reported, looking at number of cases that we see in Malaysia, and then comparing that with the number of case the cases that we see in uh, the, the UK. And with, from that, we discussed that the number of cases actually, if you if you remove asbestos as the as well as the uh, cause of occupational cancer, the number of cases between UK occupational uh, cancer compared to the cancer in Malaysia is is also is the almost similar which is basically around 18 per year I was around between between 6 and 19 per year so the number of cases of cancer in Malaysia is similar if you remove uh, asbestos of course that is the, the issue is how is is it is it is this the real figure or not are we are we to look, discussing this or not? so maybe this we will discuss it further in our forum uh, to see how can we move forward to to address this issue of identifying cases of asbestos uh, cancer in Malaysia. Uh, thank you very much. I will hand it back to uh, Prof Mazuki so Prof Mazuki can uh, continue. <laughs>